become whole again. Keep watching. I'm Damon Card, this is Life Mastery Gym, and I teach people just like you cutting edge NLP processes and techniques so that you can take charge of your life and create the destiny that you wanna live. So if that sounds good, make sure you click that subscribe button right down here so that you can get these videos on a regular basis. So what is this parts integration thing? It's also known as conflict integration, and it's one of the things that NLP is very well known for, especially when it comes to helping people get beyond self-sabotage. So by the end of this video, you're going to understand how you divide yourself and create internal conflicts and how you can overcome them. Now this is something that is part of my life's work. When it comes to the coaching that I do and the teaching that I do, I could almost sum it up by saying everything's integration. So if you wanna see what I've used to help not only myself, but hundreds of clients get past obstacles, self-imposed obstacles and self-sabotage, this is the video for you. Before I get into this, I would like to know a little bit more about you. Tell me about something you feel like you keep sabotaging yourself. You want, there's something you want to do, you go after it, but for whatever reason, you seem to mess it up or you stop doing it. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. So I get this question all the time and I hear people talking about this a lot. They, they want something really bad and they've had, oftentimes they've had a lot of false starts or starts that didn't, where they didn't see th things through to the end. So they get excited, they get motivated. Maybe they went to a seminar, maybe they got some fresh new affirmations. And so they get up in the morning and they're like, okay, I'm gonna go do this. And maybe for a week or two, you do it, you, you, you're, you stick to the plan, uh, you're, you're going after the goal, but then it all just kind of seems to fall apart. Well, it's happened to me several times and then I've learned to overcome this. And one of the ways that you overcome this is by understanding yourself better, not by trying to get rid of the part of you that you perceive as sabotaging you. And that's what I get a lot from people who come to me for coaching. They say, hey, I, I you know, I, I keep, stopping, I, I keep getting lazy or something like that. And I just want to get rid of this part of me. And I go, you know, no, no, no. Even if I could help you with that, uh, I wouldn't because all, all parts of you are valuable. And this is the first understanding to have about parts integration that even if it seems like there's a part of you that is holding you back, make friends with it. Know that it's not really, that's not what its purpose is, just to hold you back, make your life miserable or any of those things. But we tend to demonize that part of ourselves. Now, there's a reason why this part of you is unconscious or it feels the way that it does is because you are trying to push it away. This is the thing that you're trying to outrun when you're going after a goal. But this part of you, because it's part of you, is actually your ally. It's sort of like your hands, right? So you could get angry at your hand if you're overweight and you feel like this is the hand that is creating the problem because it's putting the food in your mouth. But that would be silly, wouldn't it? So we wouldn't want to go cutting off our hands thinking that this is the key to me hitting my fitness goals. That doesn't work that way. Your parts are the same way. If there is a part of you that appears to be trying to stop you from something, well, first of all, you know that this part of you is unconscious because you don't know anything about it. All you're doing is you're making a judgment about it and saying, well, this is the part of me that's trying to stop me. So welcome that part of you. Presuppose that that part of you has a positive intent for you because it actually does. And when we think about it, we, uh, in order to do this well, you want to create, you want to come up with, not create, you want to come up with something in your life where you're trying to do exactly that. Like you're trying to do something, but something's holding you back. So I'm going to use a specific example. So it's, this will be super easy to understand. And I suggest that when you do this, that you also choose a specific example so that you can get specific results, not very vague results. So one of them that I hear a lot is, is when it comes to health, eating right and exercising. And this took me a while to sort out for myself as well. Happy to say that I do have that really well sorted out. It's sort of on autopilot, it makes it super easy. So you wanna get healthier and that means you need to eat right and you need to exercise. When you go to do these things, you start off really well and then something happens. You just go back to eating the food that you, that's not good for you and you start procrastinating etc. The this, this story is old, right? So 
get in touch with that part of you, and there is a part of you that is seemingly holding you back, that's bringing you back to those other activities that you don't want to do. And what you can do if you're doing this with yourself is you can actually write this out. And I recommend that you do because it involves eliciting your value. So there's the procrastination. So there's a part of you that wants to be healthier and there's a part of you that doesn't want to do that. It doesn't want to, uh, to spend the time. It doesn't want to uh, do the work to get healthier. So you could say this is the part that's sabotaging you, but let's get clear about what this part actually is. And again, you don't have to use this example. You could use any other example. You just want to determine the two parts. Just give them a name to work with. So let's talk, let's, let's find out what it is, why I want to be healthier. So if I say, okay, well, yeah, why is that? What, what would being healthier do for me? Or what's important for me to be healthier? And so I could say, well, live longer. And let's say, and better. Live longer and better, better quality of life. So what would having a better quality of life do for me? Oh, well, I think I'd be happier, wouldn't I? Yeah. And what would being happy do for me? I would probably be more joyful. And what would, what's important about being joyful? I, it'd give me a tremendous sense of freedom. Okay, so I get these high level values that I've elicited. Now, I wanna go here and I'm gonna ask myself, well, what is the positive intent of procrastinating? Another word for positive intent is value. So we're looking for the value in procrastination, the positive intent in, in procrastination. Now that might sound really strange to you, but this is one way that we sort of welcome this behavior and embrace it instead of trying to push it away. But it's, it's often true, if not always true, that we don't really do anything for a negative intent. Now, behavior might come out that way. At cer a certain level, it may feel like we have a negative intent, but if you go deeper and deeper and deeper and you really go into any behavior, I can assure you almost always, you will find at the core a positive intent. So presuppose that about every part of yourself, that every part of yourself is trying to do something for you in a positive way. Often we make decisions at a very young age um, without much experience and we just go, oh, well, I'm doing this or I'm this from this point on. And then that decision goes unconscious. That decision turns into a, a belief or a generalization. And then that belief affects our behavior for the rest of our lives, unless we go under the hood and rewire this thing and say, okay, yeah, I made that, you know, it's often so unconscious. You don't know when or why you made that decision. And that's why you go deep inside and you find out well, what was motivating that and then take that value and still use it and grow that part of yourself up, which is common. It's, it's a common thing that happens when you're doing a process like this. So what is the positive intent of procrastination? Well, maybe it's because I want to have fun. And by the way, when you're listening, your positive intent, a lot of people first start off by saying it in a negative, what I don't want. I, well, I don't want this, or I don't want that, or I don't want to be too rigid. You know, that might be your response, but that's, we need to get this as a positive intent. So it needs to be stated in the positive. Well, I don't want to be rigid. Okay, well, what's, what do you want instead? Oh, I want to have fun. Okay. And if you have fun, then what does that do for you? Well, maybe it helps me relax. So... And what's important about relaxing? Hmm, um, puts me at peace. Okay, well, what does being at peace do for me? Oh, huh. you know, it makes me happy. And what happens when you're happy? I feel joyful. What happens when I'm joyful? I feel a sense of freedom. So you see where this is going? Now, it doesn't always work out that smoothly, but what you will inevitably find is common values between the parts. Why? Because if you go high enough in your values, at your core, your values all kind of 
find the same place. It's kind of like all the rivers find their way to the ocean. So when you have that, that is already the start of the integration. You go, wow, yeah, they're, both of these things are doing very positive things for me, or at least attempting to. And so we have common values. So this is really a, a useful part of myself. Now, some people use the visual squash method, which isn't quite as in depth as this. And then you hold the two parts out on your hands like this and you find the positives in both. And then you say, okay, well, how can we work together? And then you try to bring this together. And then if your hands can come together, um, then it, mean, it means it worked. Now it's, it can be a really beautiful process. I just found it doesn't work that much. <laughs> so uh, I like this process better. And then you can start to strategize. Well, okay, how can these two parts work together to both make you healthier? And of course, it's not about really about procrastination. It's more about having fun and relaxing. Okay, well maybe if I, every week, I, at the end of the week, after doing my exercising every single day, and eating well, I give myself a cheat day and I give myself a day off where I don't exercise so I can really enjoy it. And I'm going to enjoy it even more because I spent the whole week exercising and sticking to my plan and eating right. So that might be one way that you do it. You find ways to reward yourself. Um, so you have a cheat day or if I do, if I stick to this every two weeks or every, maybe every month, uh, I go on a trip. I allow myself to go on a trip. So you find ways to integrate fun and relaxation into your plan for being healthier. This works amazingly well. Uh, you want to come up with strategies and behaviors that you can do that merge these two together. You can go deeper on this process, but for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and bring this part of it to an end and just say, get started on this. Don't, uh, don't try to go too complex too soon. If you can really, really elicit this, and understand it and then find out the common values and how to create a strategy around this and then a, a plan that you execute, you'll, you'll see that your, this whole process will go so much better for you. Okay, now you know one way to integrate two parts of yourself, two parts, especially if they're in conflict with you. If you would like more cool NLP techniques like this one, I have a four part video series. You can go to the description right here. There's a link. You click on that link. Also, I'll put it in the comments. I'll pin it to the top. Click on that link and you get immediate access to the first video. And then another video will follow over the next three days. So go ahead and get yourself that four part video series so you can learn some other really cool NLP techniques like this one. If you like this video, make sure you click the like icon. And if you haven't already, Make sure you subscribe to this channel, the button's right down there, and click that bell so you'll be, you'll be notified when I put new videos out. And if you can think of a friend or a family member who you think would enjoy this video, make sure you share it with them. I'll see you in the next one.